Hey guys, this is Lisa. Today I wanted to talk about patriarchy. Patriarchy is a word that gets thrown around a lot, particularly recently it's being thrown around a lot as women all over the world become more and more aware of their own oppression and stand up against it. You know, even in India in the last couple of years, we've seen bursts of this incredible female resistance, whether it was in the aftermath of the Nirbhaya incident or more recently in the Me Too movement, you know, this sort of collective uprising of women against years and years, centuries even, of oppression, I think is, is what has brought this word to the fore again. And I think it's a word that's really misunderstood very often and very difficult to define. But essentially, what women are rising up against is patriarchy. And so I thought that it would be worth talking about in this video, and I've actually been reading a lot about it, because it really is a very sort of large concept in its scope, and it's something that we all participate in almost on a daily basis, even if we don't realize it. So I think both for men and women, and really regardless of your gender, it's worth really, really understanding what patriarchy is and your role in it and how it affects your life. And so I just thought I would try my best in this video to help us all get to grips with the concept. So patriarchy literally means rule of the father, like monarchy means rule of one, or anarchy means rule of none. Uh, etymologically, patriarchy just means rule of the father from the ancient Greek. And in some ways, it's also just been used to describe how families or societies are structured in different cultures, you know, where the father has a position of primacy. However, it's become sort of this whole system of oppression. And in many ways, patriarchy is at the root of all forms of oppression. It's this overarching system that is premised on the subordination of women, you know, violence against women, and just a male supremacy at the expense of women. As I said, it isn't easy to provide a short and simple definition of patriarchy. It's complicated. But in essence, it is a system. It is a structure or an organizing principle. It is the mapping of society in such a way that all cultures and traditions glorify male power and propagate female subservience. And it's a structure that has been systematically fed into society via key platforms like religion and education and law so relentlessly and for so long that many people no longer see it as a construct. People just forget that there was any other system than patriarchy and it just seems like the natural order of things as if oppressing women is just the way life works. People are blind to the fact that this is a system that we can change and that wasn't always the way societies were run. You know, it is particularly in Western societies and in colonial societies that patriarchy got its stronghold. There were societies in our part of the world particularly that did not follow this patriarchal organization, you know? And gender also was much more fluid and ideas around masculinity and femininity haven't always been as rigid and limiting and sort of violent as they are in the way that we see patriarchy today. So it's just worth thinking and sort of questioning all of these things because in a way, to assume that women being weaker or, you know, secondary to men and assume that that's just the way the world works and that's just the way it always has worked and that's just the way things are is such an injustice. It's just such an injustice to women but also to men and I want to talk about why that is. Unfortunately though, most of us are so conditioned to patriarchy that we are blind to our oppression and it's not just men but women too. We are so successfully oppressed that we don't even see it anymore sometimes. And that's what we really, really need to work on changing. I mean, let me give you an example. Um, women, historically, have been shamed for expressing their sexuality, for example, right? And not just by men, but by women too. I mean, we've all heard a woman speak of another woman's sexuality in a judgmental way, right? Like, oh, isn't her skirt too short? Or isn't that top too low? Or why does she talk to men all the time? Or things like that. Women doing that about other women, censoring other women's behavior or judging it, judging another woman for expressing her sexuality. Do you see how patriarchal that is? 
how we participate in our own oppression. It's not just the men doing it, it's also women doing it. That's how successful patriarchy has been. And that's why it's so problematic. We, we don't even see it anymore. And so we keep perpetuating it, even though it doesn't benefit us at all. It certainly done, doesn't benefit women, but it doesn't even benefit men. And I'll get to that in a bit. The ability to control women's bodies is at the center of the power dynamics of patriarchy. Just think about it, in a pre-DNA testing era, the preoccupation with paternity or the father's ability to make sure that he is the father of his son is what sort of would have generated all of these mechanisms to control women's bodies. How is a man supposed to know that his son is his son if he doesn't sort of ensure that his wife has absolutely no autonomy, no agency, a complete inability to do anything on her own, right? So primitive, but we still operate in much the same way today in all the structures that are in place to police the way women lead their lives. Think about it, marriage is like a celebration of patriarchy. The bride is given away as if she first belonged to her father and now she belongs to her husband and she was never her own person. Women are also brought up to believe that their life's purpose isn't fulfilled if they don't get married, like their only real skill is to have babies. All those ideas that we don't even question, you know, we're busy like imagining our wedding and planning our lehengas or dresses or whatever it is as if it's this great, wonderful thing without at all remembering how oppressive the concept of marriage historically has been. Female infanticide and a preference for sons is another result of patriarchy. So is the fact that most inheritance laws favor male heirs. And as for men asserting dominance amongst each other, women's bodies have historically been the battleground of choice. Consider the fact that historically when a king invaded a place, he and his soldiers would rape or seize the local women as a demonstration of their power over the enemy. Rape and violence against women has long been the cornerstone of patriarchy. And when you throw things like class and caste and religion into the mix, you just have this incredibly complex and problematic web of oppression. Now in saying all this stuff, it might be tempting to believe that I am a man-hater who's trying to dismantle a system because it benefits men and not women. But that's not the case. I love men, I really like all people. And patriarchy benefits no one, as I've hinted in in the past, it doesn't even really benefit men. Because think about it, patriarchy is the reason we have toxic masculinity. It's the reason men are brought up to believe that they have to be straight and homophobic and muscular and masculine and make a ton of money in order to be considered worthy, you know? They're encouraged to hide their emotions. They're told they can't be vulnerable. They're made to believe that they constantly have to be aggressive and strong. And these ideas of masculinity are actually really damaging, terrible for men's mental health, and produce more harm than good, if you think about it. Also, when men see women as inferior rather than equal, and when women are made to see themselves as inferior rather than equal, just think about how much we're missing out on. We are denying 50% of the population and we're denying ourselves access to that 50% of the population's ideas and creativity and input and decision-making abilities. Just imagine how much more we could all be sort of participating in together and the amount of original ideas and thoughts and just collaboration that's possible if women always had a seat at the table, you know, if it wasn't always just men making the decisions and women having to obey them. And we're already seeing glimpses of that in countries where gender equality is at a higher level and women are in positions of power where they can do things and express themselves. We're already seeing how much potential there is there, right? And imagine if that was worldwide and in every community, if women had a seat at the table just like men did and if people were able to do things together instead of within a power dynamic, there's just so much to be gained for both genders, for all genders. When we tell boys not to cry, or when we tell girls to sit with their legs together, or when we don't eat until our husbands come home, or when we take only the last names of our husbands and fathers and never our mothers, never retain our own last names, or when we encourage girls not to play sport because it's 
not ladylike or we tell men they can't be chefs or stylists or poets because those careers aren't masculine or when we insist that men be masculine and women be feminine or when we slut shame or when we force women to marry against their will and force them to have children all of these things are the result of patriarchy so if we dream of a gender equal world or even better one without rigid constructs of gender, then we have to question everything that has the slightest whiff of oppression. We can't just let ourselves or others be oppressed. I hope you liked this video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did. And I hope that you subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.